Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spotlight Over the City. I'm your host, Stan Long, along with the lovely Terry T. Bomb Long. Let's rock! Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Let's go. yeah, baby. First of all, you looking really fly and fine and cute today. Oh, I like to say that. And shout out to the whole Thank DMV. You. We love you guys. You know we appreciate you guys. L.A., Philly, Chicago. They say you better not go another show without that Be More gang. Yes, Be More in the building. You already know what it is. Uh, who else? Charlotte. Um, LA for sure. LA for and sure. And shout out to my gang, uh, Crush Houston. Magazine. What's up, Jeff Shelley down there. Yeah, in Jeff, shout out Jeff Shelley. And, oh, yeah, Houston gang for sure. Y'all, y'all mm-hmm. rocking. H Town. Everybody that's rocking with us, man. My main man down there in Atlanta. Uh, yes. My main man Clayton Brown. Shout out to Clayton. He always rocking with us and um all love. Uh, let's go. That's right. Showtime. Let's go. And shout out to you, Broadcast Media. That's you how Broadcast here. Media. I forgot. He was looking up. great every Thursday, y'all. So shout out to So them. you guys see our new set? You see this? You see all this fine situation behind us? This is you, Broadcast Media. This is who keeps us popping every single Thursday. If you want this type of situation, hook, holler at me and I can uh, assist you in that. All right? Let's All rock. right. Well, shout out to Felicia Bush. Thank you for sharing the show. Please, y'all, share Much the show. Much appreciated. Yes, share Donna the show. Gaines. Yep, yep. Everybody on IG, Facebook. Let's go. Yes, we have an amazing show lined up for you all today. Eddie Hawkins. That's my guy. Let's rock. Yes, it is Thankful Thursday. What's something you all are thankful for? Thankful Send me Thursday. A, put a comment on your uh, on our Facebook page. Your comment on Instagram is Thankful Thursdays. What is something you're thankful for today? I know it might be a little yeah. tough. Some people saying, "Man, thankful." Blah blah blah. But look, it's always somebody in a worse situation than you. As bad as yours might look, trust me. If you would look a left or right, you might find somebody who don't even have a car to complain about why you're complaining about right. getting yours fixed. That's Some right. Some people on the bus. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? So you always got to be thankful. Something to thankful for. Grateful. That's right. Um, coming up on today's show, as per usual, we have a lit show every Thursday, right? I'm so proud of this show. Every Thursday, it's an amazing show. But Your tonight, lipstick is popping. That dress is popping. Ah. Them, them Pumas even. Puma gang. You popping. Gang, like, gang. I'm loving it. <laughs> you lighting it up up here. Thank you. I'm this glad to brighten up Y'all see my wife over there? Yes. Yes. Get it, baby. Yes, I'm going to get it. I sure well, am. Go ahead and After get it, this show. Get it off. I'm going to get Let's it. Let's do it. Listen, y'all. 
<laughs> we got Brother Reza Islam coming up later in the show. And, you know, I don't know Wait, who, yeah, you said how many of light. you all know you, you said that light who way. this young man is. But if you don't know, you're going to find out today. We've been trying to get this got brother on. Got a lot on. of stuff to say. So we just want to put the disclaimer out there early. The views of the guests is not necessarily the views, not necessarily the views of Spotlight over the city. That's right. But we admire the guests that we have on for their opinions, whether it's our opinion or no. We still uh, admire them and we love to have them on. This platform is not just for one side and this is just for what we believe in is true. So if we can find some truth in it, then we try to bring it to you guys. How Absolutely. about that? So I'll let Rizzo talk on that and I can't wait for him to be on and um, I'm excited. Me this is an amazing excited. brother doing some amazing things, taking some amazing chances. I know. I'm excited too. And... You know, when whenever you see Spotlight Over the City have somebody back to back on the show, just know they are super lit. And returning this week to the show, closing out the show with another amazing spoken word, we've got Backpack Jeff in, in the, the building. building. Put your hands together. Woo! Make sure you guys follow him at Backpack Jeff. Yes. That, that guy's lit. Yes, I love indeed. It. So you'll see in a minute. Before we get going, though, we always like to shout out black businesses. This is our way of giving back to the community. If you are a black business owner and you would like to be featured on our show, email us at info at spotlightoverthecity.com. Again, our email is info at spotlightoverthecity.com. If you know of a black business that you that you utilize and you want to um, recommend them, send us an email. We will we love to feature black businesses on this show every Thursday. And this week we're just featuring Sweets Manny is a baking, scrumptious and unique treats for all your events. Manny is currently offering a dozen cupcakes for $20. Follow her on Instagram at Sweets by Manny, M A N I, and you can text her at 301-346-9078 for all inquiries y'all know how much i love sweets so yes sweets yeah you got me. me messed up i wasn't even on it now I'm on yes um we also want to shout out this week this is a a known staple in the in the dmv area but it is black owned so shout out to dawn moss and carolina kitchen they have uh locations in Hyattsville, clinton um over there Rhode Island avenue in northeast and i believe there's still a location up there at the boulevard capital center in, in largo so sh it's another black business and they're doing um happy hours now on thursdays every thursday from 4 to 9 p.m uh delante the mixer is serving up two for one on rail mixed drinks and it's game night so check them out y'all carolina kitchen yeah the food is really good over there too shout out to lance london one of uh he's the primary owner of uh, most of them that I'm, uh, I'm I'm aware of, so shout out to my man Lance over there too doing his thing. You know but what we time love it black is? businesses, you guys. We love. Make sure you e inbox us and let us know about your business so we can get you on, uh, and we'll take care of you as, as soon as we can. We like to talk about the the underdog especially. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You know what time it is now? What time is it? It's time for oh, name wait, that wait, wait. song with Stack and T Bomb, uh -oh. y'all. Transform. transform real quick. <laughs> you got your, what? Wait, what? I had to get it together. You know, Yo, lights, camera, action. It's time for name that song. Y'all know what that is. We're gonna do a couple bars of a song, and right, you right. are to name the song and the artist, and you can win a spotlight T-shirt, spotlight mug, spotlight hat, hands, hats, all of that. We got them. You mugs. can win anything spotlight this except him. You can't win him. He's mug. mine. Oh, yeah? Yes, you okay. can't win him. He's not up for grabs. But yes, you can win anything else. He is the voice to make the old lady's voice. Huh? I don't think they, yeah, no. Like focus on your brand. Don't okay. focus on my brand. Focus. <laughs> All right. So y'all ready? You ready, baby? You want to go first? All right. Now, this this young lady's done a pretty amazing job so far. Don't y'all agree? So I'm going to just <clears> give you your props and say, go ahead and knock them dead. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm trying to dig deep because I want to get stumbled Sean. The girl Sean, she guesses every week. So here we go. It's been a long time since you asked me. How was my day and kiss me before I could say, yeah, baby. It's been a long time since you told me if things could change, you would have it no other way. Okay. Ah, I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Do you know it? Um... I know the song, but I do not know the artist. Okay, all right. Because they probably Anybody like on Instagram know? They, they, oh, they that's like, so, don't matter. 
You got to give still, people I that's sing a, that dad. It's a lot of younger now. people that may not know. Good, because so I'm trying song. to stumble you. I'm trying to stumble y'all. Okay, so y'all going to have to dig deep. You might need one. Shazam for that. This one right here, I, Sean, Sean, I got you this week. I promise you I got okay. you. Which one of these cameras meet? I'm five. All right. Give it to him, baby. This is one of my favorite artists. This is how I'm going to start this. I'm going to say, and I hope I do it a little bit of justice. Someone stop the world, yeah. Oh, shit. Seems like the moment has come that I'm going to get you, girl. Hey. The, the shadows are forming across the past. The vision looks absurd, yeah. No one around to interrupt the feelings you start, babe. Mm. Oh, mm. imagine if this was. Okay, you can't go no further because then they're going to know the song. <laughs> yeah, hey, babe. This is my favorite Give off. it up for Sexual Chocolate, hey, y'all. Hey, yeah, hey, Sexual Chocolate is in the bit. building. Name, name. Yeah, the voice yes. make a moist. The they voice come. that makes so the old ladies name moist. the song, name the artist, and we got you, Sean. Oh. Sean, I got you this week, Sean. I bet you you don't know this Brie one, got mine wrong, but she got yours right. Who do? Brie. <laughs> Brie got it. it? Yeah. Well, she got the artist. I don't know if she knows the name okay. of the song. Okay. Well, that's close. She it, got the artist. Since she's in-house, if she has the artist, then Brie gets a shirt mm. right on the spot. I even... Damn it. Did so, I does anybody... Felicia, you okay. said I stumped you. Does anybody know the name of my song and the artist? I, I'm going to get somebody today. So, everybody on IG? Everybody see, on I'm, Facebook? I'm going to keep watching. Matter of fact, let I'm me shout some looking. people out real quick. Let me shout y'all out. Felicia, I got you. You didn't know it. Uh, who this? Uh, Amber, um, Bria. Bree. That's Bree. Right oh, here. Oh, Bree. Let me see what Bree said. She got it. Maxwell. She okay. said right there. Okay, Bree, you halfway there. You halfway there. And no, and then she Sean. just the world. She got it. Bree got, got the it. whole thing. She got the shirt. Ebony, what you got? Ebony, I ain't hear Ebony say none. Eddie Hawkins, what y'all got? Donna Gaines, all of y'all. I don't see nobody. Yeah, we Yeah, I bet you I got y'all this time. I you got it. get Bree. I didn't get Bree. Bree said she got that. Bree was on it. Bree that mean I must have did close to the right. The you good did job. good. You did a great job, yeah. sexual. It was recognizable. Do you have a spotlight shining star though? That's what we want to know. I have a spotlight, now. spotlight shining star. I sure do. You do. So. What you got, baby? Coming up is Spotlight Shining Star segment. This segment is one of my favorites, and actually, we talk about people who do some amazing things in the community. And um, I would love to say uh, this this young brother has been doing some amazing things in the community for a long time, not just right now. Mm -hmm. So I just would like to say congratulations to actor, comedian, singer, and one of the most talented young brothers that I've ever seen in Hollywood, Jamie Foxx, for yes. winning the Oscar on Sunday for Best uh, Animated <laughs> Feature for a Pixar film. This is it's called Soul. This makes Foxx the first black lead in a Pixar film. The first yes. black lead in a Pixar film. Jamie Foxx, okay. Um, to ever win a Golden Globe and an Oscar award. And so when I say this is really big, it's and so it's well deserved is what I do know. I haven't watched the film yet, but I will say that um, this man is amazing in everything that he has done. Y'all saw him in Ray. Y'all saw him. He was Ray. I thought he was Ray. Yeah, mind. he was Big Mama. And so, uh, huh? Wasn't he Big Mama? Oh, no, no that's Martin Lawrence. You, I'm going to take your black card if you say one more thing like that on here. Um, that's going to be the last day for this type of activity. Cause you, you, I think Shit, you, I was close. You, you, you from Kent Lane? <laughs> um, you from Lane, Kent. And so, yes. Shout out to you. Uh, you get on my nerves. My main man, Jamie Foxx. Shout out and, to and, you, Jamie Foxx. And not only for that, they didn't say singer. Did they say singer? When yeah, I, I say... So. One of his first albums was one of the most fire albums in the I world. Know. And shout out to the homie, the local Tank, for help producing that whole thing. Put nine songs out on there that he wrote. So shout out to Tank. Shout Let's out. Let's go. Let's go. We got a quick commercial break before we get to some spotlight news for spotlight you. Spotlight news. We got some amazing news for you guys, but mostly we're going to preserve the time for uh, our guests. Because we have amazing guests today and we don't make sure that we share this platform correctly. Because we've been waiting for this guy to come up. So we'll be right back. Spotlight over the city. Spotlight over the city. Catch us every Thursday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. via www.spotlightoverthecity.com. You can follow us on Instagram at Spotlight Over the City. You can find us on Facebook, Spotlight Over the City. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spotlight Over the City TV, y'all. Yes, indeed. And it's also on Twitter. Don't forget, Spotlight Over the City. Welcome back to Spotlight. And man, I'm having a great time so far. Yes. You guys having a good time? Yes, so I, I am. I got them this time, y'all. They did not guess it. I got one person in the audience that 
guess half, half. She named the artist. She didn't name and the, the song. song. She did. She named the song. Uh huh. She followed up and said, "Stop the world." She did. Brie got the whole. So thing. Brie got the whole. Thing. Y'all <laughs> okay. That so means that you did. I'm gonna go ahead. And, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys because we never do tell you who it was. Maxwell is the artist, and the song was Stop the World. Maxwell, I ain't telling y'all mine yet. I'm going to give Sean a chance to guess it. Sean, I'll tell you mine I know me Sean commercial. be on it. She didn't yeah. get it. So I, Next I, commercial, I'll, I'll tell y'all mine. So think about what I just sang, and then check back with me. Big shout out to rappers Gunna and Young Thug, who went back to their hometown of Atlanta this past week and posted bond for 30 Fulton County inmates being held for minor charges. The two of them went up there with their coins, their lawyers, and bondsmen to help those who could not afford bond, and they were being held on low level charges. I like that. You like that? I don't just like it. I love it. I like that. I love it so much that I'm hoping that it spreads wide enough for other rappers and entertainers to do the same thing. They holding a lot of young men uh, pretty much hostage on traffic tickets and stupid stuff that they can't pay a $300 bond and all this. It's just foolish. Yeah, so a, a lot stuff. of these people don't need to be incarcerated. Yeah. It's just a waste of taxpayers' money. So I'm yeah. thankful that these young men came through. And so a lot of this stuff don't get uh, announced on regular TV. And stuff like that. They always talk about when they locked them up and when they ran down on them and when they was drunk driving and all that. But these young men are doing some great things. So shout out to them too. Love That's it. That's right. Shout I think it's it amazing. Too. So keep doing the good work. I shout out to little baby while he killing it. So I know, right? right? Is that who would? Is that who that is? Gunna and nah, Young Thug. No, that's Gunna and Young Thug. Oh. But I say shout out to little baby while be speaking on the okay. rappers because he down in Atlanta killing it. Killing the game. That's all right. over the world. Everybody know that little that young man, and I think he deserves it. All right. Well, shout out to him. The body camera footage of police. Fatally shooting Andrew Brown Jr., a black man in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, will not be released to the public, but it will be disclosed at some point to Brown's family. So he, they say, Superior so Court the judge, judge, yeah, the loser. Superior Court Judge Jeff, Judge Jeff Foster, ruled against a petition filed by a coalition of media outlets to release the footage of the fatal police encounter involving Brown, who was 42 years old. The judge explained that releasing this video could affect a trial if one ever occurs, and it could possibly put the safety of the deputies involved in the shooting in jeopardy. So the county police department claims that the shooting was justified because they say that Andrew Brown tried to hit the officers with his car. Okay, let's rewind. What's the judge's name? The judge's name is Jeff Foster, Superior okay. Court Judge loser. Jeff Foster. You're you the a loser. loser for life. You're an idiot and a loser. So first of all, let's address the whole system. Taxpayers pay for police officers. That's A. Um, you get body cam that they probably also pay for for you to have. That's B. So you have body cam for a reason. So why would the body cam have to go outside of a police force to get uh, author authorized by a judge when it's body cam? I don't and so it's, it's that. supposed to be to justify the, the injustice, the injustice that's going on. And so this goofball decides to say, no, we don't need it. It could put the officers in danger. Who just doing the shooting and acting a fool might put them in jeopardy. Yeah. I don't give a damn about that. So you got to think about that when you do unjust acts. So you can't, you should already be in jeopardy in my opinion. So you set yourself up. So now if you're in jeopardy, okay, judge, help him. Put him behind bars and hold him for a while or do something to him. What do you want us to do? Show up at his house, why don't you? I That's guess what, what I, I don't know. If I have some spotlight viewers um, watching right now that if you are part of the court system, a judge, anyone who can help me understand, because yeah. I really can't wrap my mind maybe, around, like, maybe what is the us. point of a body cam camera? For if one? you have to go to court to get the why body you have cam to go to footage, court to and get then the they can footage, deny it. And they can deny it. So what is the purpose of the body cam yeah. footage help, if help, the judge help us can out. say, no, nah, you lawyer, judge, you whoever. It. Uh, help us out a little it. bit because we're trying to understand because we don't understand and we think it's whack. And then the other um, thing I need understanding of is if someone try, it, it, even if he did try to hit you with a vehicle, nah, well, do you, you, know, you shoot somebody? That. You, no, 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 no. They're going to say that though. They always No, but they're going to justify the means by saying oh, he uh, tried that he to tried to car. hit you with a car and mm. this and that. So, I mean, no, at the end of the day. No, he was trying to get away. Pretty much. And so at the end of the day, this is what's been happening forever. Picture we didn't have cameras. And then we go to the judge and he say, no. No, you can't see I don't it. want you to see that footage because it might affect the trial. That's why the footage is available. So, so it, it can, can affect, affect the, the trial. trial, dummy. And so this is why you're the loser for life. Not just this week, next month. All your life, you're the cold-blooded loser. Uh, whatever agree. your name is. I don't even want to say his name no more. I agree. That's how I do, though. What's, the boy, what's his name? What's um, his, uh, young boy's name? This boy? I done moved on. His name is... Klansman who? <laughs> His name is Jeff Foster. Klansman Jeff Foster, you a loser for life. Loser for life, yes, Jeff indeed. Foster. Those are my words. I meant that. 
All right, well, we're moving it into the D.C. And, and DMV area now. Last Thursday, four police officers from Ward 7 in D.C., they had a drag race down to Anacostia Avenue at 5 p.m. and totaled two D.C. squad cars. Middle of the daytime. Middle of the daytime. They, sus mm. they sustained multiple injuries. None, no, no, none of them were life-threatening. Mm -hmm. um, they've been placed on non-contact while they investigate the incident. I don't know what non-contact mean, but I it guess that's just they not, don't leave. They, yeah, they, they on administrative or something like that. So okay. that's what they do? Is that like fun or is that like part of their training? Well, I don't know that the taxpayers pay them to race the police cars in the middle of the damn street in the middle of the day and endanger other people's lives. Because if I did it, they would pretty much arrest me. Yeah, pretty and, um, much. <laughs> I would have to go to court. The way things are for going, some you things. might, they so might shoot So this is what I want to know. Why are they shooting acting a fool in D.C.? You just got racing on your mind. You just, I'm going to race around and just run through. Are stuff. we allowed to know their names? Like, who are they? Yeah. Who are the two police officers who were the drag racing the at same 5 o'clock in the daytime yeah. on Anacostia Avenue? Who are you? Goof and Fee. Goof, <laughs> Goof and Fee. That's yes, who you are. Hey, y'all. So I, I just, I, you know, I only, I'm not going to put too much energy into that because that's nothing. It's yeah. other things going on that's way serious right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah well, we do, got what you, do what you want with them. Right. Do what you want with them. Goof and Fee. Yeah. Let them um, go. Listen, the, who watched the Oscars? Um, we actually watched a little well, bit of it. Let me say, this is the first time that I pretty much watched the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Um, that's I don't know that that's sad. Is that sad? Because mm -hmm. I'm into entertainment. I'm into movies and this and that. But I've never really thought that they would do us justice as a black person. So I wasn't really too much into it. Just being honest, I didn't give a damn about it because mm -hmm. I didn't recognize us at the Oscars. So. This time it was a lot different, right? Yeah, and I heard some like, of the white commentators, they didn't like it. They, they were like, oh, well, it seemed like we went to church. Maybe you need to go to church. Uh, <laughs> but it was a lot of, you know, rhetoric that was like, oh, it was too blackish. And then, you know, that was, it was undertone, like, oh, yeah, then they kind of took over. Well, oh, well, guess what? we probably deserve to take over because if you erase us from entertainment and all of the other things that you want to erase us from, what you got? And so the Oscars should have some black faces a long time ago and brown faces a long time ago. And so they did it some justice. Tyler Perry and a lot of other people was, ooh, getting killing it, right? Yeah, they did. Um, actress Glenn Close, she came through with her clappers, y'all. Glenn, I ain't a girl. I ain't know you had it like that. But yes, she, did she the butt correctly on. guessed <laughs> and danced to EU's hit the butt. Shut y'all want to see it? We got a clip. Cool. Let me show y'all. Let me okay, show you. We'll be right back. I think you got something in I don't know. Quest Love, just play it. Let me see. Here we go. I said, come here, big girl. Won't you rock my world? Show that dance to me. She wants to do it in the light. Hey. Okay, you know what's up. Stop, stop, stop. That's not fair to Glenn Close. She don't know nothing about Wait doing it. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I know. That's the butt. <laughs> yeah, it's the butt. I know that. The butt was... Wait a second. It, it was a classic song by the great Washington, D.C. go-go band EU. Oh. So, yeah, and shout-outs to Sugar Bear and the whole the backyard band and the whole DMV. So, anyway, um, so, wait. I, no, I, I remember this. So, Spike Lee, um, you know, had it written for his brilliant movie, School Days, and um, my friends at the Oscars um, missed it, and it wasn't nominated so it couldn't have won which i think is just an effing tragedy um, i wasn't expecting that at all that you knew the butt uh, it's, it's very it's dope and uncomfortable at the same time that you had all but you know but do you know the dance though do you know how to do the butt quest turn up come on let's see it. let me see you do the butt let's see it Oh man, did. welcome back. So, yeah, go ahead. Do her she, thing. She, she's about to twerk on y'all. Yes, she's indeed. like 79, 85 or something. I don't know, but she's she about did to bust it down. But I love it because she's super cool. Shout out um, to I love I love people who can embrace culture that's not just their culture. Like, that was cool. Right? I do too. I love it. Shout out to the, the young black guy, though. I, somebody tell me his name. They got the country song with the young white girl that's so fire. This white girl fire. Her name is uh, Ann Lynn, something Lynn. And I his, don't know. And his, and yeah, they are fire. I'm going to get it before the end of the show, but let's go. Okay. Speaking of the Oscars, um, congratulations to Tyler Perry, who accepted the Humanitarian Award, and he gave a well very, deserved. very moving speech. I want to play a, a, a few seconds of I'm it. I'm glad we had that. We'll be right back. Let's watch this clip. I, I refuse to hate someone because they are Mexican or because they are black or white. 
or LBGTQ. I refuse to hate someone because they are a police officer. I refuse to hate someone because they are Asian. I would hope that we would refuse hate. And I want to take this Gene Herschel humanitarian award and dedicate it to anyone who wants to stand in the middle, no matter what's around the wall, stand in the middle, because that's where healing happens. That's where conversation happens. That's where change happens. It happens in the middle. So anyone who wants to meet me in the middle to refuse hate, to refuse blanket judgment, and to help lift someone's feet off the ground, this one is for you too. God bless you, and thank you, Academy. I appreciate it. Yeah, Tyler Perry, man. Shout out to him for sure. This this young man is so groundbreaking and innovative. I've never seen anybody do the things that Tyler Perry. I don't know that you have either because this young man has done some groundbreaking stuff. So you deserve every award that they can think to throw at you. So shout out to Tyler Perry. I agree. Shout out to you, sir. And shout out to the whole ATL. <clears throat> the go. firearm industry trade association has recently released a report showing that fire, firearms among black women and men has increased by 60% in 2020. That's roughly 3.3 million people across the country that have begun implementing their second amendment rights. This comes after the BLM movement, Black Lives Matter movement, took to the streets to fight against police brutality. The director of public affairs for the firearm industry trade association said they're seeing a shift in the market of people who purchase guns and it's starting to look like the rest of the America. We're going to. Um, hey, well, that's a yeah. good thing. Shout out to tactical forces in Baltimore. Um, we're getting ready to do some big things with them and, and get some training for our uh, black and brown people and whoever else needs to train and doesn't matter. But I always they say, why do you always talk about black and brown people? Because I'm black. And so I think that we have to be attended to because we've been mishandled so long. So I always make sure I address us first and just make sure that we get in the loop. Uh, white people have been have access to guns and rifles and this and that. And we've been afraid to even purchase and didn't know how to own pistols and guns. And So now is the time. So we'll train you, get you uh, well equipped. And we'll we talk about that a little bit more. We then. sure will. We sure will. Speaking of that, I do want to um, shout out to our uh, news sponsors. News, not new. News sponsors. Spotlight News has been sponsored by Shea Butter Like Whoa and Tactical Force Training Solution. Shea Butter Like Whoa, they provide gentle and natural skincare products that are 100% non-toxic. They source plant-derived ingredients of the highest quality. I'm smelling like a little shea butterish right now. They make your skin super soft. You can be summertime fine, and you can get a discount by going to their website right now, www.sheabutterlikewo.com, and at the end of your order, you put in SPOT20, SPOT20, and you get 10% off your order. What better way to get you some shea butter for the summer? Go ahead and do it now. Father's Day, Mother's Day is coming up. Go order you some shea butter today, www.sheabutterlikewo.com. Um, yeah, make, yes. sure, make sure you do that because I tell you, it's an amazing product. I like the texture especially. It's yes. like a great texture. They have a lot of different uh, scents and stuff like that. So amazing. It really works. And also, you all, like we were just saying about your Second Amendment rights, Tactical Force Training is the solution to you acquiring licensing for the Maryland HQL, which is owning a firearm in your home. And also, they do wear and carry courses where you can carry your firearm around. They also offer private lessons in firearms cleaning, maintenance, and marksmanship. To register for a class or find out more information, or you can enroll in their gun club, visit them on Facebook or Instagram at Tactical Force Training Solution, or you can visit their website at tacticalforcetrainingsolution.square.site, S-I-T-E. Their offices are located at 3004 Elsa Avenue in Baltimore, and their telephone number is 443-250-9000, or you can reach Dwayne Elmore. He said you can call him directly at 410-262-1087, Tactical Force Training Solutions. And shout out to my Be More gang again. They'll get you straight, and we're going to be participating in the classes and um, setting up the trainings and stuff on this side. So That's you don't have right. to go to Baltimore. We're going to have it right on the D.C. side. You can come right to our establishment, and we'll have the training right there, take you right to the, uh, the range. You'll be able to use the weapons and get comfortable, and you'll take your what we call your concealed to carry uh, license last, where you can actually have a concealed weapon uh, in your possession. And That's those right. things are very important, and we'll talk about it another time. But make sure you don't be afraid to uh, get involved. That's right. Um, honey, 
it is now time for because I went out of order. I apologize for that. You're so you good. Do, do that part first. Um, we need to talk about Spotlight Sports. There's something the Wizards have been doing something pretty good. You got something over there to talk? Tell us I what's do. the update so, on um, on our team here in the DMV. Well, first of all, shout out to the Wizards. And shout out to them. Bradley Bill, man, he's been cooking for a minute. A lot of people been not on it, but Spotlight Sports. Um, congratulations to the Washington Wizards who beat the Cleveland Cavaliers on Sunday, putting the team on its eighth game winning streak. All right. Eight games. Okay. They're doing a good job because they don't have the biggest roster, but they're doing great. They haven't done that in 20 years. It's been a long time, 20 years, back when Michael Jordan was signed to the team. Unfortunately, the Spurs ended that winning streak on Monday with the game ending in three point in a three point loss. Yeah, but they on a good um, streak. But though. they were on a great streak, and I think that they will uh, continue to uh, be a winner. Um, Bradley Bill is a big part of that situation. Everybody knows that, and he is cooking. And so, cooking. shout out to Mr. Bradley Bill. He's been doing a lot of work for a lot of you know a long time over there. He's not a newcomer to putting it up. But for whatever reason, he's just really killing it this year. So killing shout out the game. To him. Killing the game. Shout out to him. Shout and out Wizards, to him. The whole, the whole organization. The whole organization. Um, we have question of the week coming up. Before we um, go and get our guests ready uh, for our Zoom with RZA, we got to go through our question of the week. Question of the week is an opportunity for our Spotlight viewers and listeners to submit questions about your relationship, or you can ask about our relationship. I did see a question in the bunch about us, and I, I um, said I'll pick that like next week. It's a good one, y'all, so be ready. But this week um, was a, a good one. I wanted to try to help this person out with some advice. Spotlight question of the week, by the way, is sponsored by Umbrella Therapeutic Services. Umbrella Therapeutic Services is D.C.'s most reliable and trusted behavioral health organization. They provide community support, medication management, therapy for individuals and groups. They accept Medicaid, Medicare, private health insurance programs. If you are a D.C. resident, you can use their services if you're between the ages of 5 and 100. Umbrella Therapeutic Services is on Instagram as well as they have a website now, www.umbrellatherapeuticservices.com. And shout out to CEO Wes Jones, still expanding that company. Really, really proud of you, Wes, doing boss things. Doing some really boss things. I mean, yeah. this guy, they, I, he, I can't say enough about Wes. He yeah. just stays in the trenches and um, he's doing some amazing things. So make sure you hit up Umbrella Therapeutic Services. It's a D.C. service. So yes, if you're in is. D.C., make sure you look them up. Mental health. May is Mental Health Month, you all. Is right, yes. May is right around the corner. So take your mental health seriously. That's one thing I love to drive home. Please do not, because there's so much pressure. Um, sometimes when you're not in the same position as other people, you don't realize their position. And so a lot of people are really hurting right now. They've lost jobs. They haven't been able to collect unemployment. It's a lot of different, uh, you know, scenarios. Yeah. So please keep it together. If you feel like you're not uh, all the way there, just please go get you a mental tune-up. Don't feel like it's not appropriate for you. It is. We all sometimes need that tune-up. And you go there, and it's discreet. You can go there and get you some help, and next thing you know, you'll be right back on top. So That's how about right. that? How about that? All right. So this question of the week is from a young lady. And here uh -oh, goes. Oh, y'all, brace yourself. Y'all listen goes. up. Here we go. I need help determining what defines date rape. I'm dating someone now who used to be a professional athlete. Lots of people know him. Lots of women still adore him, so he is accustomed to getting his way. He has been very good to me thus far, but the other night when I was at his house, he wanted to have sex, but I was experiencing something weird down there, and I didn't want to do it. So I told him no. I had never told him no to sex before, so he thought I was joking. I didn't want to tell him that I thought I had an infection or whatever. I, I just simply wanted to say no. And I kept saying no firmly, and he kept trying me. He eventually forcefully bent me over, pulled my panties down, and he did it to me anyway. At that point, I didn't bother to fight him anymore. He is way physically stronger than me anyway. I feel a way about him now, though. Doesn't no mean no, even if you're in a relationship? I shouldn't have to I shouldn't have to have told him why I just told him no. Why was my personal business, but I said no repeatedly and he strong armed me. Is that date rape because he is my he he is my boyfriend. I don't know about moving forward in a serious relationship with him anymore. Damn. This is a tough situation. Um mm -hmm. this is a really tough situation. So mm. is it date rape? 
Is that date rape? Is it date rape? That's a great. It's, it depends. Or is it any kind of rape? It, I mean, if she's if if a woman is denying you and you say and you're being aggressive and, and pursuing it, then you're pretty much taking over the situation, which is against their will, which is rape. Um, the tricky part about it is is actually your boyfriend, and you you've already had a we've had relationships relationship before, right. with this person, and you're involved. So it's I've almost been here before in my past. I've almost so what happened was we were drinking. And um, that situation occurred. We was already, you know, having a situation mm-hmm. prior to, and she didn't want to at that time, but we had already got halfway down the road. And so I just had to restrain. So you do have to have restraint and say, if, if, if a person is saying no, 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 you just have to really take heed and say, okay, you know what? I'm hands off. No, I mean, it no, just y'all. really, you have to get up. I don't care if you butterball naked. I don't care what the situation is. You really have to get up. You have to say, okay, cool, and respect the wishes. Don't press forward thinking they mean yes when they say no. no. They really have to say yes or, right. in, or insinuate that yes is the answer. If they saying no, I think that you should listen to this young lady. I feel for but the young now, lady for the young I've lady, been though. in this situation before in my past dating life. So I want you to address this real I, quick, but I, before, before I toss it over to you, I want to say um, I think that the young lady should have a conversation, though, um, with this young man, and don't just let it go. You should talk to this young man and find out where his head is, and find let him know where you are and how you stand on it, and be a communicator. Tell the person, right? Nah. And even when it got to that, you should have actually said no. I mean no, and I'm gonna take it further if you do this because I feel uncomfortable. So you really have to stand on it. It's 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 tough, and so as a woman who has been in in a very very similar situation like that you know I was you know in my I don't know how old this young lady is but I was in my young 30s and very similar situation and I said no I was just but I was already involved with this person we had already done it before so you know when I come over that's what he probably thinking but at this moment I was just like no I had other issues going on too and I was just like no he was like whatever whatever and I was like I'm serious like no and the same thing happened to me young lady and I just because I'm passive aggressive I was just like whatever forget it and but I felt violated because I'm like I said no and like don't grab my arm so hard and tightly where I can't do nothing that's like violation and so at that point because you already in something with this person you're just like okay whatever but so you felt like because you had already been with that yeah. person then I'm just and I'm, go. I'm voluntarily going over there. You know, I'm voluntarily going over there to spend the night because I've spent the night before. But on this particular night, I did not want to have sex. And I have a right to be like, now, I don't want to. Now, wait. I didn't say I'm let coming me, over there to, just, to do let it. Let me just put this disclaimer out there. Sisters, don't put yourself in a trick bag. You know men have intentions a lot. If you're dating a man, know the man. Know his intentions. Be clear about it before you go over there with your little Louis overnight bag and then all of a sudden you start feeling away, talking about nah, 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 y'all been kissing, slobbing and eating lobster and now the next thing you know, two, three drinks later, you in denial. That's a trick bag. Don't even do it. Go out to dinner if you don't have a plan to hump on that man and just eat dinner and say, I'm going to take it on in now. I'm not going to come to your house and get naked with you, young man. That's when I'm you're not in the position. Dating. To sleep with you tonight. Right. And I don't want to do that. I now agree. you should have the right to say no regardless. That's when you But do. just know who you dating. And if you feel an inkling of this person's flipping or going the wrong way with you, believe what they say when people say that's who they are. But please believe them. Right. So but it's what tough. if you don't like again, this young lady said he's been good to her thus far. This is probably something that caught her off guard, like as it did me. Like you don't expect for that to happen. And you like, damn. And then, then afterwards you like looking at the person like for so let, so can I speak so from the man's for me? Standpoint? Well, let me just finish. For me, I'm because I'm passive aggressive. The way I handled my situation at that time, young lady, is I just cut the person off. They didn't even know why, and I just didn't give them. I, I just didn't give them any explanation because you. I think a man, you know, when I say when you say no, and I say no like 18 times, and you gotta grab my arm so tightly where you gotta force me to do something, you know that that's inappropriate. So don't ask me why I'm never going to talk to you again. That's how I handled it. It's not the right way to handle things because that's poor communication. It's passion. But I still think that when you see a sign like that, it's what kind of conversation do you want to have? Oh, you already saw what type of person No, you have is. a real conversation. This is what this young lady needs to do. This is my point. See, if not for you, for the next woman. See, you have to make it clear to a man. See... Sometimes men's intentions is jaded. They just have a one, they don't see nothing else. If you've already been sleeping with this young lady, 
you would not normally think she's going to come over your house, get naked and say, no, you're just not going to see that coming. So when it happens, it's a shock to your system and you have to make a grown man adjustment. Some young men don't have that grown man in the moment adjustment. If two, three drinks then kicked in, now he like, I don't know if you really mean, nah, because you, man, you already been going, getting it on. This is what I mean by sisters, don't put yourself in a trick bag. Understand the position that you're putting a person in. And if you see it going down that road and you know you don't have that intent, back away. Back away before you totally get there. I want to hear what uh, uh, Jeff has to say. We got an audience member. Um, I want to hear your opinion on this because I think you had something to add. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So um, this this actually happened recently. <laughs> recently, uh, with, with my lady, she's uh, she's here, and so I was I was going out of town, you know, for four days, and I'm like, okay, you know, I need you know something to, to a refill, over. and and she said no, and um, you know, I I had to in that moment take take myself out of it and think about her. You know, she was right. tired, she wasn't really feeling good and stuff like that, and I said, okay, you know what. I'm going to do the grown man thing and just, you know, I'm going to let her go to sleep. I'm going to hold her. And that's that's pretty much what I did, man. I, I held her until she went to sleep. Um, and then uh, we got up at 3 o'clock in the morning to to get me to my flight. That was it. So um, re just, just respect. Kudos to you. But respect. That's yeah, Much respect to that. That's what I mean. Every man doesn't have that restraint. It took restraint for you to say, okay, all right. Shit. Right. So, so we're not going to do no humping. So, okay, I'm going to just cuddle. And just lay up under you and imagine that we was doing it, but I'm not going to do it. And so at the end of the day, these things happen in real life. And you have to be the grown-up man and say, I'm a man. And I have to say, it, it may not happen tonight. It doesn't mean never. It do, just means tonight. So just right. kill it. Kill it. When they say no, kill it. Do you remember that time? Um, Stan and I used to date long distance for a while. And we, he would come up and visit me once a month or I would go down there, right? Do you remember that time you came up to visit? And y'all know I'm full disclosure. I had just had like a wax or something like that. And I was like, no, babe, I can't do it today. And you was oh, like, yeah, what I was that? Living. You was mad. See, yeah. So this is what I mean. And though, you had come saying. all the way up there. Yeah. And I was like, we can't. And I'm like, why? What's going and, on? But you didn't force it, but you were pissed. Yeah. Well, I, well because I come long distance and that wasn't no disclaimer prior to. I'm thinking right. we get ready whoop whoop. <laughs> And right. I come up here, and then you hit me with the, you know, well, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. And so, but I'm not going to jump on you and try to beat you in the head. You didn't. You choke didn't. You. After you were mad, you, 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 we, you eventually, you know, we went out to dinner, and we eventually enjoyed ourselves. You know, we've learned over the years anyway to enjoy each other's company with just spooning. You know, I love a good spoon. Yeah, so. but I mean, but for those people who uh, are younger or even older and don't have that restraint, when that young lady says, I know it may not even feel like a no in your head. But if she telling you no, I promise you, it could be a lot more trouble on the other side of that fence. If no you go, means no. If you go through with it, you might have a lot of regrets. Dr. Yeah. Neverson is on here. She says men need to be responsible and have self-control. No means no. Um, Eddie Hawkins said Stan is trying to give a different perspective, which is real, but no still means absolutely no. Yeah, that's true. If she says, that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, if the sister's telling you no... Don't try to figure out why. Don't get to begging her what's wrong. Don't try to pull her panties down or none of that and pursue and think she's going to change her mind. Just give it up. Sometimes you have to be in a safe spot and say, okay, I respect your wishes. It's just respecting her wishes. Right. Um, let's see. What if someone... Oops. Sorry, y'all. I was trying to read a comment. Rape is rape. Any form of force, especially when they are not married yet. And that that's very true. So, so what happens when you're married and your spouse still hits, hits you with the uh, not tonight and you like, come on, and, 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 and you know, you like a bag of rocks. And she like, what, uh, 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 so now what's the difference? It's still no. So now um, what we do now? We just say, nah, we married. It's still no, though, right? It's no. It's no. Do men get raped? Like, do men ever say no and a woman just I take hope, it? I be hoping you rape me. Like... <laughs> I ain't gonna press y'all to rape me. Do what you gotta do. I was wondering, like, do men get raped? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just, just, I don't know. Do they? Yeah, just force my clothes off. Just go wild. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell nobody. I ain't gonna say nothing. Hey, Jeff, you watching? Have you ever been raped before, violated as men? Has, has a man. Who are you talking to? Jeff on here. Oh, I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Why are you harassing Jeff? Jeff Ball? He's been Not raping this. Jeff. Well, wait. Back it up. Jeff, come brother, back. Come back to the show. Jeff, Bring it back to the head. Okay, Jeff. Uh, why would Jeff get on here and tell you he was raped? I don't know. I'm just asking any of the men listening 
Is that and real? So, and so, and it does happen. So even for know. me, I was I was 11, 10, and eleven years old. No, it's all men. Being, all men. I said I was a man. I was a young man. I was being molested by older women. And so what happens is it turns you a, a different way. You you get more. You're not you're not supposed to know that level of sex at that age. You're not mature enough to handle what comes with it. So you become promiscuous and this and that. And that's why I was loving women and all this craziness that I went through for so long. That's what happens. So or it could go worse. But I mean, you know, I, you know, I do thank God it was a female rather than a male. Not to dis, disrespect other people's situations, but um, that was mine. And so okay. I didn't realize it was molestation because I was a young man and I was thinking it was cool. Right. Like I thought, okay, this is cool right here. She's older and she's trying to whoop de whoop. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And so then when you get older, you be like, wow, she was molesting me. And yeah. so, yeah. So, right. yes, it happens. I believe that it happens with older men. If you fly enough and cool enough and, you know, if you got, if it's that good, good, and she really want it, she might want to try to bust in the head and take it from you. Like, like you know, not bust in the head, literally, but, mm. you know, like, yeah. And okay. so what do you do as a man? Like, nah, you raping me. <laughs> what do you, I mean, there have oh, been, been like one or two times where you've told me, no, I could have just taken it. I you should have. That's, that's what violated I, that, you. That does violate me. That's what you <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Well, um, we gotta see. Um, we gotta see how we can get RZA through on our uh, Zoom and, and get all yeah, of that you guys together. Stay so we tuned, man. Go we got an amazing show. Getting give ready you to all come some up. a commercial or two, and I'll try to get RZA on for you all. We'll be right back with our next guest, Spotlight Over the City. I'm Terry Williams, the founder of Shea Butter Like Whoa, a natural body care company based in Maryland. We specialize in body butters, scrubs, oils that are awesome for the entire family. What makes us different, you might ask? We use only plant-based ingredients in our products. We've been curating our products for over 10 plus years. We put a lot of love into our products and the process is what separates from others. We make products for your entire family to enjoy. We love what we do. We put that in every product that we make. And we want you to try us out today. You can reach us and you can look at what we have to offer on our website at ShayButterLikeWo.com. You can also follow us on any of our social media outlets as well. We look forward to you visiting us and we look forward to your future business. Visit us today at ShayButterLikeWo.com.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. And man, when I tell you, I cannot be more excited to have this next guest on. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. We've been trying to get this guy on because he's a, he's a big, big spirit. Let's just say that. Yep. And um, I love this guy with so much passion because his energy, his uh, ambition, his truths, just the way he goes out for uh, everything. For that Yeah, he, he goes all out. Um, never leaves nothing on the floor, just takes it all out. And so when I say it's an honor and a pleasure to have this man on, let's give it up for none other than their brother, brother Rizza, Rizza Islam, Islam in the building. <laughs> oh, man, man, man. man, I'm honored. I'm honored. You already know. That's my guy. What's up, brother? Man, all is well, brother. We're still pushing, man. The work does not stop. So we boots on the ground and never ends, you know, and as much as we can do, we will do. So I'm always honored to be brought on to any platform in the DMV area. Like I told you earlier, that's my family out there. So I love my DMV family. <laughs> For sure. And we so love we're, honored. You. we're definitely honored to have you. So let's get right into it, man. So tell the people who are not really familiar with uh, Riza Islam, who is Riza? And um, then we'll get into where you're from and we'll go from there. Absolutely. Well, Brother Reza Islam is simply number one, your brother, your brother, your brother, number one above everything else. Aside from that, I'm an author, an independent researcher, activist, uh, an honorary doctor <laughs> as uh, recently as February. I uh, received my doctorate from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and uh, just a brother who has been doing this work for roughly now 21 years within the inner city communities of uh, the United States, starting right here in Compton. LA and then of course throughout the rest of the country now and then of course now internationally across the earth. So it's been a lot of work, just a lot of work that's been going down and I cover multiple areas, pretty much any area that affects our people is what I tackle, expose, educate, elevate, and then help to provide solutions for. So that's pretty much in a nutshell where Brother Reza Islam is. So that's amazing in itself. So uh, kudos to you for who you are and what you do. And you work your butt off. When I say you are working, you are always busy. You are always hitting the ground. You're always taking risks for us. So we thank you for that. Yes, and indeed. so um, let's get yes, to the movement a little bit. Um, let's talk, talk a little bit about what you're into and what you're involved in. And um, we'll go from there. Like, what you got? What's going on? We, are, we all know what's going on. But yes. Yeah, we know what's going Man. on. But we, we're going to let the people know. <laughs> because now, before we get into it, let me just say this. Um, a lot of people are against um, what you're about to say. A lot of people are jaded in their thoughts. A lot of people just feel how they feel. So we respect all of you guys' opinions out there. I know that a lot of people watching may not agree with uh, me or Brother uh, Riza Islam's um, ideas and whatever the case is. And you'll have that right to your opinion. But we just here to be the people's champ and give you a platform to be able to make a difference um, with truth. Because we don't scrub anything. We don't get rid of anything. We just let people air it out. And um, this is why we're on it. So just have an open heart, an open mind, and just maybe, just maybe you can have a different perspective. If not, it's okay. But just have an open mind and listen to this brother because he has a lot of things that's uh, factual to say. He has, shows evidence, has receipts. 
for what he says. So um, just have an open mind. You yes. know, don't let people sway you uh, with media opinion against what could be factual and you're just not really catching it. So we're going to let you have the floor, brother, and you let us know uh, how you feel about the situation, what's at hand, and go forward from there. And so, which and now, which situation specifically are we talking about? So, I know you wanted to address the vaccine situation because uh, we have oh, a big yes. we have a big issue with the vaccine situation. So, you have a lot of people yeah. out here that's lining up to get the vaccine. They feel excited about it, and I, I don't have anything negative to say. Like I said, I have family members that's already gotten vaccinated, um, friends that's already gotten vaccinated. Um, I'm pretty much one of the oddballs. That, yeah, um, Stan and I are oddballs. Um, I will die first. <laughs> But anyway, I'm just saying that to say I don't want to sway other people. I just want them to have their facts. So maybe we can do some facts checking here and you can let them know uh, how you feel and your uh, homework and what you've done uh, to, to come up with some real factual information. Yeah, so the first thing I'll say is we really, really, really have to understand exactly who and what it is that we are dealing with because we go into this trusting our same open enemy. When I say open enemy, I'm not specifically referring to white people. I'm talking about the same government that has committed atrocities among black people, among brown people, among Asians, among the natives, among even some poor white people. The same government that in no way, shape or form wholeheartedly cares about the health of the people. So the first thing we have to do is look at and check for and question the motive. Always understand the motive of your enemy. Why is it that the same government that allows fluoride and puts fluoride in your water, why is the same government that puts all of these chemicals into your what is called fast food, if you want to call it that or the lack thereof, why is it the same government that puts soy byproducts into your baby formula, into all of the other things that you're eating? Almost every other thing that you're eating has a soy byproduct base in it. Why is it that the same government that allows domestic terrorism or police officers to murder you, the same government that takes your children away from you, the same government that does all of these horrific things toward you, all of a sudden says, well, even though we poison your air, we poison your water, we poison your food, we don't really give you the proper education. Well, we're taking away your money, your livelihood, your ability to take care of yourself, your children. We're not really protecting you. We don't really treat you entirely as citizens. Why is it that we all of a sudden now care so much about your health? These are just questions that we have to ask ourselves. Then on top of this, they say, well, I'm going to give you something that I have given you in the past that has harmed you to the tunes of hundreds of thousands within this country, as well as to the tunes of millions outside of this country. I'm going to give you something that costs a lot of money to manufacture and make, even though my budget does not necessarily allow for it because we are in debt even though I won't give you reparations because you deserve it because of what we did to your families, even though we've given it to the Chinese for what they did and what we did to them, even though we gave it to Israel and continue to give reparations to Israel to the tune of over $8 billion every year off the top of the budget, even though we have given so much to other human beings, but we don't give to you what you rightfully deserve. But all of a sudden, we care about your health, even though we put you in the condition that you are currently in for the most part to where your health is in the condition that it is in. The first thing you have to do is question the motive and then you must be honest with yourself. If you're simply ignorant and don't realize what it is that's going on, then say that and get answers. But the people who are lining up for the vast majority are believing in a system that they truly believe now all of a sudden cares about them when there is no yardstick of measurement to demonstrate that. So I had to kind of lay that foundation so that we can get in the right frame of mind before I drop the facts about what I'm going to say to validate my point, which is, number one, these shots are not legally classified as vaccines. That's point number one, because they are point, in their yeah. experimental stage. And let me get very specific. Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, these three have not been approved by the FDA. They are approved under what is called an emergency use authorization or an EUA. That is not the same as FDA approval. We have to understand the difference. So when you have an emergency use authorization, this means that the government has determined that we will allow this to be given to our citizens, even while it is under its trial and under its experimental process. Mm. I, hope, I hope we're understanding mm. this point right wait, now. Wait, back up. Did you say experimental yeah. 
Experimental. Literally. Yep. Literally. The, okay. the Moderna, the AstraZeneca, and the Pfizer shots are literally, medically, chemically, legally classified currently right now as experimental. Mm. Now, I want you all to go and look up these things on their own website so that you can see your brother is not just blowing smoke or just talking. The only one that has been approved by the FDA was the Johnson & Johnson shot back in December, and you see what happened with that. If exactly. you did not see, let me update you. The only one that was approved by the FDA is the exact one that they had to stop injecting into people because it was creating and causing blood clots. They said it was only six. No, there were a hell of a lot more than six. We According to it. the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, also known as the VAERS system, which is the joint system of reporting between the CDC and the FDA. In that system, people report to it all of the negative effects, side effects, direct effects from receiving these shots. Nurses, doctors, chemists, virologists, epidemiologists, anyone injecting these shots into a person's arm or any human being must report any negative findings. And to that form or the VAERS system, there have been over 2,500 deaths and over 35,000 adverse reactions as of right now directly connected to these experimental shots. I'm not mm. saying connected to COVID. I'm saying connected to the COVID, what you call vaccines. Right. That's actual facts. So that's point number one. So when they said six blood clots is why we shut down the Johnson & Johnson injecting, shots, uh, injecting sites, no, you're lying. Or what I'm, what I'm saying is they omitted the other large amount of data, which is that there are people dying, there are people coming down with miscarriages. That's also on the VAERS website, over 50 miscarriages. There is encephalopathy, also known as brain swelling. That's happening all over the place. Wow. There is a sporadic amount of rashes all over people's bodies. Some people's skin is peeling off. And I'm not just saying a little bit like eczema. I'm saying entire patches of skin coming off, being red. That was even reported on the mainstream news mm. because it was happening to so many people. They couldn't hide it. I want us to understand how deep this is. So again, before I continue, I don't want to scare those who have taken the shot. However, I will say the Honorable Minister as far as warned us, too many of our people have warned us, and just the blatant history and present and current behavior of this government has been in our face. If you really believe that all of a sudden this same government that absolutely hates you is going to now find a way to take care of you and that they love you, et cetera, there is a, a sick problem we have up here. And on top of that, the employees who are doctors, who are lawyers, some of us have family members who are in the medical field, they believe them, they trusted them because they really thought that what they are being given to give to people is legit, is safe and effective when it is not. And that is the actual fact. So, I, 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 again, I know a lot of people have taken these shots. So right now, I just recommend you do your best to detox you do your best to go back into natural remedies, herbs and vitamins, minerals, etc. Get back to that to boost your immune system, which is the only guaranteed way for you to be protected against any viruses or bacteria. That is the only way guaranteed. So there's a lot more on top of it. You can't sue anyone. Yeah, by the that's way. a fact. You can't sue. Shot, yeah, you cannot sue. Not they put that sue. into law. You cannot sue for the vaccine. But I want to back up for a second because you said a lot. Yes, so sir. let's get back to where you said you can't trust your government a lot of people um do not believe that as truth um this is part of why uh millions of people have lined up when they even say insensitively shots in arms shots in arms treat you like cattle or what they call goyim they still line right. up shots in arms shots in arms so for people like myself and yourself that see uh certain situations differently how do you talk to people who totally trust government and believe that these people are trying to keep them safe? How do you uh, address these people? Real simple. The first thing I do is I ask them to prove to me and show me how the government cares for them. Just show me. If you say, oh, my SSI check. That's not the government care for me. Section 8. That's, that's not the government care for me. They have to put, they got to put money out so that they get money back into the economy. Because they know you're going to just put the money right back into the economy to keep the economy going. So that's not really them caring about. It's like the stimulus check. They didn't give out stimulus checks because they cared about the people. They cared about the economy. Right. So they know if I give you this money, 
the, the vast majority of black and brown folk or, and poor white folk, you're just going to pour it right back into the economy anyway to re-stimulate it and keep it going. So it's not that I really care about you. It's that I care about my government not falling economically. So I'm going to do something to stimulate it, not you, it. If you, if you happen to receive some help and benefit, that's fine. That's fine. Cool, cool, cool. But it's not, the motive is not to help you. That's what I want us all to understand. And, and the other thing is we get a little too personal where we start going with, well, I know somebody who's a nurse, or I'm a nurse, or I'm a doctor, or I'm a... Di-. Okay, it's not about you. You are not the one in the high levels of government. Mm. You are not the one sitting at the table. You are not the one coming up with the actual plans. You don't know what they do. I have conversations with some of these people. You don't know. I've asked them specific questions that most of you will never be able to ask them because you wouldn't even know where to start because you don't think that evil still even exists if you trust a government like this wholeheartedly. Mm. You can trust certain people in it. I understand that. Certain family members, certain people that you know are good people, individuals. But this system, which is still based in a foundation of a system of white supremacy, whether you choose to acknowledge that or not is up to you. But the reality is you cannot prove wholeheartedly across the board how they care about us. You can't show me how they care, prove how they care. And I'm not saying symbols, I'm saying substance. Mm. Show me how they care about us in a substantive manner, not because, oh, we apologized this time, or we gave you 1,500 in a stimulus, or no, 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 that, those these little things that'll knock you off, or here's the other side of it. Too many of you listen to these celebrities. This is another thing I'm gonna say. Mm. The vast majority of people who are lining up taking these shots, are the ones who listen to some of these celebrities, the rappers, the singers, the actors, the actresses, or the athletes. And let me tell you, I speak to most of them. They don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> and when I say that, I say they don't consciously know exactly how dangerous this is. The ones that I talk to do, but the ones that got up there and promoted it to you, you know I didn't talk to them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know that's right. Okay? I know that's I right. Very clear. I believe I that. Be so, so I really they told me, you see, like they told me straight up, reason I was called by this company, they offered me this much money just to say that I was going to take the shot. This is how deep it is. I want y'all to get this. They offered me this much money just to say to trust science. They offered me this much money just to just to put up a picture that looked like I would take the shot, even if I really wasn't taking the shot. Mm-hmm. These are details that these major celebrities have told me, and yeah. I can't say their name. So but they Riza, told me straight up, I not, don't want to take it. I'm not taking it. And I'm not promoting it because this is weird. Why are they pushing so hard? Mm. So many of you listen to them because you love the artist that you listen to. You love the actress or the actor. You love the athlete. You love how he dunk or whatever. So you follow them not knowing that they are just as ignorant, if not more, than you are. Yep. (laughs) And so those are facts. I want to piggyback off of that because a lot of what you're saying, we've talked about um, in private. We've talked about with other people. Um, So... A lot of people are so afraid. Um, fear. The America has become fear-based or fear-driven, right? On purpose, the media has yes. driven fear so hard that people have bought into it to the point where now we don't even buy into God anymore. We buy into the fear and don't even know God. So I want to address that real quick because how did we get as a black people? How do you feel as a black and brown people that we got so fearful that we left our base? Mm. Mm. Beautiful question. First thing is, when a person removes the knowledge of who you are, the knowledge of God that you know how to call him or her or its name, the knowledge of the devil, the knowledge of the time, what must be done, the knowledge of your culture, the knowledge of exactly who you are, where you come from, and anything dealing with your history and your overall understanding of your existence as a human reality. By that first move, I can now inject inside of you an entire different type of personality to where I can control you as a slave. The first thing that had to be done was for us to be removed from the knowledge of who we are and who we were. That's number one. You can't enslave a person who knows who they are. You cannot make a person afraid if they know who God is. You cannot control a person who has their own strength, their own mind, their own understanding. You can't do that to somebody. So they had to do that to us first. Then allow us to maneuver in a way where we thought we were free and then come between us to create a system of tricks and lies deceptive intelligence and division so you cause us to now fight and kill one another so now we don't have an overall understanding of unity 
we don't even want to operate collectively. We all got our own mind. We all want to do this over here, over there, while every other group of people operate as a unit. Even if there are individuals, they still go back to that, that thing. And I'm Chinese. Y'all can say whatever you want, but I know I'm Chinese. Y'all can say what you want. I know I'm Jewish. Y'all can say whatever you want. I know I'm native. Y'all can say whatever you want. I'm Australian. See, they go back to what they, they know what they are. We happen to give ourselves so many different names, labels. I'm this, I'm that. It's just like you are not united, which means it doesn't mean that we have to all operate the same in how we dress and how we talk. No, but we have to be on the same page. We have exactly. to be on the same page. Agreed. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's the point. So they took that from us, then created a system of division and tricks and lies to keep us fighting one another. And now you are able to now control someone like that because you have them on remote control Negro mentality. Yep. We are operating like Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> so they yeah, got us on savages. Remote yeah. control. You see yep. what I'm saying? So yep. now the fear is easily able to be injected into a people when you know how they operate. We are reactors more than proactors. We are <laughs> reactors more than calculators by nature, which we are. We're reactors more than we are strategizing groups of people and group thinkers like we normally are. That's our nature. But they removed us from that. And now we have become react, 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 react to everything. And when I see this, I'm watching exactly how the playbook is going, how they're doing things on TV, at what time they murder somebody, how they allow the videos to go up. But then when you speak truth about this topic, they pull it down. But yep. us being murdered and all that, they leave it up. There's always a strategy on how they do this. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So the fear yep. side of it is they made us believe that they are God and that there is no God above them. Because if you fear nothing and no one but God for real, then you can't be afraid of nobody. That's why they don't oh. like when they have brothers like me, like you, sisters like you, and people like us talking. Because they know we fear something that's bigger than them and bigger than us. Hey, Reza, you wait see? a minute. I got to just stop you for two seconds. I'm going to just, I love you, brother. <laughs> you, I just think I'm you. I think, I think I'm you in my mind. Like, it's no way that somebody can say all these things and don't, I, I, I'm, because I'm thinking, I say this to my wife daily. All the like, time. Like, I say almost everything that you're telling me. I, I've been saying this. <laughs> From the time this came on, because I, I used to be the person who was really active in it, and I had a site, and I was talking this talk, and I was trying to enlighten my people and let them know that, and you know, just look at Event 201, for instance, you guys. What happened to that? Then I said, that, how did Gates get out of the uh, computer business into tracking and tracing? And how did they, and how did they get $100 billion, 100, what, $100 billion a year starting the first year? How did this happen? And so I was doing my homework, and I was trying to expose the situation. And um, they stifled my views, and they started doing crazy stuff. And, and so people said, you going to have RZA come on? And I want to tell you something. Yep. <laughs> I said, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm, I can't wait to have him come on because I will, I'm a person who will bet on, of, on myself and bet on my people every day. Yep. And so if it takes for us to... What happens is when a man like RZA comes on, the whole black and brown community should ride with RZA, understand that he's a bold thinker, a bold person, at least get acknowledged enough to have the information to say yay or nay, and then go and stand on it. Don't let other people say, nah, he's no good for you. No, he's no good for mm. you. That doesn't mean he's no good mm. for us. And so we embrace you and say we, we feel here that you're good for us because you inform us with information that's truth. And we're not here for falsehood. That's not what we're doing. Man. So I want you to continue, I man. But I just that, want bro. you to say that this platform has definitely been blessed by you today as, as the information that you've given so far. And I thank you for giving your time. But we're yes, not sir. finished. No, Let's keep rocking. That. No, we're not. We got yeah, like six finished. more minutes. Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going. But I just had to say that to you, man, because... When you hitting these notes, I'm like, man, I know that song. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'll say it this way, brother. The sad thing is they have allowed, and when I say they, I'm talking about our people who have been so mentally controlled. They've allowed their own enemies to become the MVPs within our community. Yep. And yep. now we, we listen to people who we don't even know over the people who have consistently been there for us. Yep. We stand with people who have no record of helping us whatsoever, but because they have a title, money, or they're white a lot of times. Okay. Yep. Or they're yep. a specific political party, or they have a certain label of a scientist. We trust them so easily, not realizing that guess what? You are going to receive and you're going to face the truth that your brothers and sisters have been telling you, whether if you like it or not, you're going to see. It. 
And not only that, I'm not here to tell you to become this or become that or do this or do that. I'm simply informing you and giving you factual information for you to go see for yourself, to empower yourself. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing else. I'm not pushing nothing on you. So I'm not going to tell you to be a member of the Nation of Islam, though I am. I'm not going to tell you to be a Muslim, though I am. I'm not going to tell you to eat the way I eat, drink the way I drink. I'm not going to tell you to do any of that. I will tell you, my brother and my sister invited me on and they asked me specific questions. And I'm obligated to help my people by providing the answers. This is what I do. And in the 21 years of my life doing this, brother, 21 years, long before YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and all of that was even in existence, I've been doing this. Yeah. So when I see now some, it's a very small percentage, by the way, of any of our people who are like, oh, why are you going to have them on there? They don't even realize, brother, that that truth that we are talking about is going to hit them so hard, so heavy, that they're going to wish they listen. And I'm not even going to sit here and brag when it hits you. I'm just going to be like, I, I just, I tried to warn you. So, really, so I agree with you so much, brother. So to give, to give insight to the situation... The reason why a brother like myself and yourself can see different is because you're seeing with spiritual eyes and ears. You're listening with spiritual eyes, brother, and spiritual ears. And so God gives you a download that you can receive information with a different vision. And so when you talk to people without that download, without that God connection, then their vision is faint. So like, like I say, I like to tell people, sometimes you can see down the street, but God sees down the street, round the corner, all the way around. So he give you that download, your vision is a lot different. And so when you proceed to give people things as a prophet or a man of God, it doesn't come off as such because they don't see a thing that you're saying. So for those people right. who don't have that vision, how do you, you know, because you're, you're, you're fighting a big time battle with our people. That's been forever. So how do you yes, uh, <laughs> gently handle Handle the course and stay the course because it's a hell of a course. Or yeah, it's tough. I know it's tough, man. It's tougher than people mm -hmm. can imagine to be you, brother. Um, I, and I commend you. It's tough. So how do you stay the course for twenty years? Real. That's it's a very simple answer, brother. I love my people more than they hate themselves. Mm. I say that one more time, Rizzo. <laughs> I gotta say that I for the back row, the back people back there, the deaf people. I'm telling you, man, I really love us more than we hate ourselves. I really do. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that that is exactly how we have to be. It takes time to grow into that. You know, because, yeah, you, yeah. you know, a lot of us, we don't been in situations with yeah. black folks, with our own people, family, friends, associates, where we were lied to, betrayed, some, you know, beaten, beaten, you know, money was stolen, whatever. We, so, so we have reasons why we can dislike each other, but I don't use one individual circumstance between me and them and put that on my whole people. Right. I don't right. do that. I don't say because the relationship between me and this sister didn't work out that all black women are bad. I don't say that because me and my brother fell out that all black men is niggas. And that, no, no, that, that's, that's insanity. Right. That's truly insane. I love my people, bro. And I see the benefit of the work that not only I do, but all of us do whenever I go out and I see the people, you know, throwing up the fist, running up, hugging me, man. Thank you so much. You helped me to do this. You me, it, Brother, just one of those will keep me going for two to three to five to ten years. Just one person saying that to me. And even if nobody acknowledges me for doing that, I know that what I'm doing is effective because it's coming from in here. I love my people. Can't nobody say otherwise. Well, with that being said, man, I want to give you your flowers right now. We believe you in giving out. comment? We got a comment to read to you, okay. Brother Reza. You can read okay. it. But before you read it, I want to give you your flowers, brother. And I want to say again, it's a tough job. The road is ahead of you. There's a bigger road ahead of you. But God is with you. I'm praying for you daily. I'm going to touch and agree that it's going to get done. Any work that I could get to put in with you, just hit me up and I got you, brother. I know a lot of people here in this city. I can plug you right in and we can make some things work. But I definitely say I commend you for your work. Commend yes. you. Appreciate that, brother. I agree with my husband on that. But I wanted to share with you a comment from one of our viewers. Angela Joy Clemens says, his heart, talking about you, his heart is bigger than his body. He's my Pisces brother. So I just wanted to I just wanted to share that. That was very cute. There's someone who must know when your birthday is and said your well, heart you. yeah. is bigger than your body. Yeah, like and I'm gonna shout out Ebony. Ebony, a uh, friend of mine, Ebony out in um Ebony's here. She's in the in uh, LA. Like 
No, El- Ebony is up in like the New York Okay, New York, so Jersey. E- Ebony uh, shouted me out yesterday before the show, and she commended me for having you on and being bold enough to put you on this platform and not care about that, A. But B, she wanted to say she has been following you for years, and she loves the work that you do. And a lot of us do uh, mm-hmm. love the work that you do, um, a lot of people, and they don't get a chance to say that. So I want to let you know here, yep. we're giving you your flowers, and we want you to know that there's a lot of people cheering you on, brother, a lot of people. I appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you to the sister for that beautiful comment. Yes, I'm, I'm Pisces, March 17th. <laughs> she's, she's so my brother, it. I appreciate you as well. And yeah. for all the work that you are doing, because we, we need it. There's nearly 50 million black folks in this country, roughly 331 million people in America. We need as much help as we can get with one another. So, yeah, so we're know, not I truly keep appreciate on, you for the work you're doing. We'll keep on, like I said, having an open platform. And you hit me up, brother, and we'll talk. And anything we can go further with, I got you on that. And um, we love you. We appreciate you so, 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 so much. And um, don't ever think that your work is in vain. I know you don't, but um, because you took your ego out of it, I can see. But I just want you to know, man, a lot of more people than what you can imagine are very, very appreciative of you and also the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Don't leave him out. One of my favorite in the world. So I want to say that. To be clear, I have a side. I've stood on that side for a long time. And a lot of people are afraid to take a stance, but that's just not me. So I say thank you for uh, being a bold brother that you are. Yep. I say the same thing. And you are part of our Spotlight family. We consider you a part of our family now. Anytime our platform can help this movement, the answer for you is yes. It's yes and amen every time, man. We appreciate you, brother. Appreciate um, that. Salute to you, man. I know we can't follow you because they kind (laughs) of... They they don't just call your stuff up. I saw... Hey, look. Hey, Rizzo. I saw you got out of jail one time and they put you right back... I say Rizzo came on swinging the day after he got out of jail. Yeah, man. (laughs) So they put you back. (laughs) So I said, well, hell, I don't know what to do now. So I got to get him on the show. But yeah. I I can tell you, um, you can follow me. My last... Instagram page, my backup is called Not Another Tuskegee Experiment. Okay. Not another right. to speak the experiment. Not y'all got that? that? Page. Not another right. to speak the experiment. And I also experiment. have a, there's two apps that I'm on. One is called Fanbase and the other one is called Melanated People's App. So I'm on those two apps, both black owned, both high quality, amazing apps. So you can follow me on those. And also my, uh, my app is almost done and my text group blast is almost done as well. So I'm, I have more ways to have the people follow me in the work that I do off of the mainstream uh, sources. And I might be getting my, my uh, main page back as well. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. God work. We'll see. So, so we're going to hope that they let you back out of jail and let you But if not, again. we're going to keep not, up with you we'll, in those other we'll, ways. So make sure you hit us up and give us those uh, links uh, so we can pl- post them on our page because we have a lot of people asking for it. And um, salute to you again, brother, for all that you do. Let's give it up one more time. Y'all, yes! Yeah, this was so appreciate amazing. Y'all. Appreciate so y'all. enlightening. Peace and, brother. Peace and, peace and breath. blessings, brother. Yes, indeed. Much love. Thank Man, y'all. I, that's one of my favorite Much people. I, I really appreciate him uh, coming on to the show and, and um, enlightening us and giving us some real true facts and um thank you again i appreciate him yes so indeed. next up yes next up we're gonna this young close man with... right here man is amazing you guys see him last week and um if you didn't see him last week you have a chance to see him for the first time so he's gonna do a spoken word and i'm gonna introduce him a little bit so we'll be right back after this commercial break spotlight Second Amendment, that's your right to keep it at home. Shut my 
stop being friends, but it's people trying to change that to exercise your rights. Stand up, it's time to fight back. Crime plaguing our streets like it's a damn war zone. Politicians got no answers, look like we all have a long for your first line of defense in 911. Slower than 9 millimeter, you can get the heater. Tactical force training solution, help you get your dumb permits, make you a better shooter. Welcome back to Spotlight, you guys. And guess what? We got us another plus one in the building. And in case you're not familiar, this brother was here last week, and we had to have him back because he was so amazing. Um, make sure you follow him. I'll let you know that information after we get off here. But give it up one more time for my homeboy, my main man, the spoken word gangster, none other than Backpack Jeff. Let's go. If the streets could talk, they would probably say, you must have forgotten what I done for you. After all we been through, wait, don't you ever turn your back on me. I might not have brought you into this world, but I will damn sure take you out. Where you think your mama got it from? But come here, little man, let me talk with you. Let's see if I can paint for you the large picture. Lessons. You can't paint a big picture without a small paintbrush because you'll miss all of the little details that make it actual artwork. But your kids ain't art no more. You don't mold them into what you want them to be. The streets have made them tough. Put fire to their souls. Now you got to sculpt them. But be careful where you cut because once you clip their confidence, it'll never grow back. I taught you so many things about life. I hope they would stick to you. Why do you think I put that gum on your shoe? To show you that when you walk into somebody else's mess, it's going to take some work to get off. So be careful where you step. I taught you so many things about life. And people ask, why are you so drawn to me? But they don't know I was there for you. I raised you. From the moment your mama brought you home from the hospital, I was there. Because your daddy was too busy running around with my sister. That's the street corner. Think about it. Those times at night when you wouldn't go to sleep, what would your mom do? Take you out for a drive so I can sing you lullabies as you fall asleep? Ain't it sad that I have sang you more songs than bedtime stories your dad has read you? But it's not like I didn't give him a chance to try to teach you how to be a real man. Like the time when you fell and busted your face on me and he replied, you better not cry. Don't be no little bitch. And that's my fault. Just a young boy at seven years old told not to cry. But he cried when Ricky died. I guess the boys in the hood deserve a tear, but not his son. You know the amount of tears I have tasted and the gallons of liquor I have drank for the sins of your people. If the streets could talk, you might know who killed your best friend. But the streets don't talk. See, I gave your kids street smarts, but they didn't have enough book smarts to figure it out. I gave you CEOs, you turned them into OGs. I gave you hustlers, you turned them into hustlers. Use your mentality the wrong way and you're going to get what you deserve. When two people got the same hustlers mentality, it's just about the client that you serve. And then you're going to be mad at me because when you get locked up, you got people that will put money on your books. But when you try to go to school, those same people won't put money on your books. They willing to invest in the food that you eat when you locked up, but won't invest in your food for thought when you free. Now, that's food for thought. I showed you examples of how to get back up when you get knocked down. These crackheads get up faster than you when they get knocked down. And I'm the only one that holds them at night when they do, when they go to sleep. So what are you complaining about? I gave your kids everything they need to survive and you're gonna blame their downfalls on me? No. Nah. <laughs> if you want your kids back so damn bad, then stop letting me raise them. Because remember, I'm the real wolf in sheep's clothing. Thank you. Man, put them hands together. Come on, give it up one more time. Give it up one more time. Give it up one more time for Backpack Jeff in the building. Hey, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. When I say that. I love it, I love it. I love this show. I love everything about it. I got to say, man, I thank you guys all the time, man. I love you guys. The whole DMV, we love you. Everybody that watches us, we love you. Um, man, pri uh, one, one thing I'll say before I go. Please make sure you are tuned into our uh, our uh, our IG. Not just IG. What is it, baby? Our, our Facebook page. Not just that. Our uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe because we have some beautiful content on that page. It's not just our prior shows. Everything that we've covered, we've been covering and covering and covering and we've been all kind of things. So make sure you get on there. I got to get ready to wrap it up. They're giving me the signal, but uh, I always like to say before I go, love hard, live good. God first. Spotlight over the city, baby. Let's go.